it only makes sense for us to move on to yeah. the next segment, yeah. which is our listeners' favorite segment. Rapid fires. Now, in this segment, I'll be asking my guests biased questions that they've got asked at some point in life. And in Florence's case, it will be some of the misconceptions and biases that people have about what she does or like even mental health issues in general. So, Florence, are you ready? Not quite, but we can start. (laughs) (laughs) You're the best person to answer these questions. In this room, maybe. In this room, (laughs) yes. Now, um, first question. You are a clinical psychologist. Can you read my mind? I think we talked about that, right? I'm sorry, but we can't. Surprisingly. <laughs> yeah. No. <laughs> no, well, I mean, yeah, we talk about it, how it's about body language and we don't really get professionally trained in that. Um, but we, we, I think apart from the fact that maybe people get that from movies, I was thinking maybe the other reason is we ask questions and try to understand your thoughts feelings everything and then we actually would make hypotheses about okay how's that link to your problems that you mentioned Mm. and the more you work you know we are all human beings to an extent that actually there will be some patterns you know if someone have certain you know behavior certain thoughts and stuff we could hypothesize similar problems or you know similar link for these people so maybe that's the reason why that could be the reason why people think we can read minds because maybe some people mention something and then we make a hypothesis oh what do you think is it because of that you know what do you think um especially when chatting as a friend we would be easily to make assumptions because we're not like working because we would just be straightforward and be like oh do you think it's that and then and because that actually comes from our experience so maybe that's why people feel like they could read minds because sometimes I, re- I remember like my friends asked me something and I was like oh is it because this and that and she's like oh my god how do you read my mind <laughs> and then and then the next second he was like oh my god how do you read her mind <laughs> like the person that he was talking about um so yeah i guess that could be the reason why well i, I guess that could work in your favor right because some of your friends if they don't know if they really think that you read their minds they they would think that they should not lie to you <laughs> <laughs> well funny enough i get lied to a lot <laughs> <laughs> and you could you could tell I'm very gullible. <laughs> Oh dear. Now the next question. Um, therapy doesn't work. Actually, um, I'm lucky that I don't personally hear this mm. um, so far. Um, or maybe I did, I just kind of filter it out. Um, therapy doesn't work. I would say I don't disagree because nothing works for everybody. There's no one size fits all. And so as medications, medications doesn't work for everybody anyway. Um, so yeah, I would say it doesn't work for everybody, but how do you know if you don't try it? And I think there are lots of different reasons why therapy doesn't work for somebody because um, Therapy is also a lot about the therapeutic relationship you have with the therapist or psychologist and we don't get along with everyone. So sometimes it's like dating, right? On Tinder, you don't know who's going to match you. You see the profile, looks great, you have a coffee and you realize you're not compatible. So I think that's similar to therapy. You need to find a therapist that's actually compatible with you. Um, so that's one thing and I think the second thing is also depending on where you're at in your life and your readiness for therapy so as I mentioned there are different types of therapy so that's this well-known CBT which is about you know making changes to your current life you know what you can do you learn techniques and you change the way you deal with things or you think about things but not everyone is ready to make changes yet right it's easier 
easier said than done. I know all the theory, but I can't do it. But it doesn't mean that therapy is not suitable for you. It's just this specific type of therapy, which is CBT, might not be suitable. But there are loads of other forms of therapy that could be helpful. For example, some therapy that, for example, we call psychodynamic therapy that focus on, you know, dealing with your past, you know, your subconscious mind. You know, there are lots of different types of therapy, and I feel like it's all about finding the right fit for you. And unfortunately, it takes time. It It takes money as well, efforts as well.、Um, but maybe ultimately you would say, well, nothing works. Then yeah, maybe nothing works. Maybe this person needs more medications to stabilize their problems first.、Um, so yeah, I would partially agree with this. I would say.、Mm. And the next question is, you are just chatting with people. <laughs> yeah, I think I, I put that because I really get offended by this. Please don't say that. <laughs> yeah,、um, I think, but I don't blame people because you know they don't. They are not obligated to know about、mm. our profession, just like us to other profession.、Um, but I say this is a misconception again. Maybe on TV, you know, people see the the patient lie on the couch and the psychologist. You know, sitting here, but that's not what happened. I don't. We don't have anyone who lie on a couch. We sit on a chair. <laughs> anyway, so、um, we, I would say, chatting or talking to people is a form, is a medium for us to do therapy, because talking is the clearest way to know what that person is trying to say, rather than like you know sign language or body language. It's just a medium. Um, but there's a lot more behind that because we are not just chatting with you like how's your day. So that's more like counseling actually. Counseling is more like you know you come in, tell me about your day or your problem, and then I more put myself in a more like a listener place. But for proper like therapy. Is not just about chatting. We we ask you like some maybe hard questions to really get you thinking, what's going on, and chatting was just a medium. So it's just like medications, right? Like、um, you take a medication, so it's really easy. You swallow it. But it's not about how you swallow the medication. It's about what's inside the medications that helps you.、Um, so yeah, I would say.、Mm, okay, got it. And last question in this segment: Having mental health issues means you are crazy. I think、um, maybe in. Asia or Hong Kong, it's still mental health is still something、uh, that, especially the older generation, that is not quite open to yet, right?、Mm. Um, so, I would say, how do I address this? I would say, first of all,、um, as I said earlier, mental health problems or issues or these diagnoses is, I would see it as a human reaction when. Things become really challenging and hard for you. And when you say craziness,、um, I'm not sure if they're more of referring to people with psychosis because I know there are like some news recently about people with psychosis and had tried to stab someone. Is that do you remember that? I do remember it. Actually, last year there were some cases of like violence yeah, yeah, that yeah, might yeah, be. Yeah. To do with、yeah. mental health patients, but、yeah. there were a lot of talks around the person being mentally ill rather than you know the action of the person. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think definitely media has a has a lot about that. But I think yeah, rather than thinking that person is crazy,、um, actually people with mental health issues, especially for psychosis. To hurt other people is a lot less likely than them being hurt. There's research to support that. I, I can't say for other mental health problems, just but especially for psychosis. But I would imagine similar to other mental health issues. I would say is more of how the media portray these people.、Um, and and I think to be honest, I think being able to to accept or even tell people that you have mental health problems. And to seek help is is the least crazy thing, isn't it? Because you are accepting yourself and you are trying to seek help and to be better.、Mm. Um, so I think 
I was I don't know how to how to debunk that, but just to have a more empathy for people and help and we can and it's all bias, isn't it? So how about all these other criminals that don't have mental issues they mm. report? It's just the news wouldn't mention them. Um, so I think it's 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 important to to understand before we judge, I would say. I think in Hong Kong um, I personally feel like people could be quite judgmental. Mm. Um, you know, we see something, we judge them straight away. Um, but I feel like as someone who's outside of the picture, who have very limited information, it's really not fair to make that judgment. Um, well, news and news, you know, and I would say with everything as well, when we hear people having mental health issues or diagnosis or problems why don't we try to have more information and you know find out a bit more before labeling them crazy because imagine if you know what had happened to them and and imagine what that happened on you would you think you are crazy to have the same reaction as them um, but I feel like it's, it's a long journey to yeah. to to destigmatize these. Things. We really need to become a lot aware about like our assumptions or like exactly. ill-informed yeah. Um, yeah. thoughts, and yeah. um, just don't make any assumptions before you even know any facts, which is the key point of this whole rapid bias segment. But thank you yeah. so much for answering all yeah. the questions, Florence. Yeah.